Let's start. Imagine for a moment we are all software developers. Um, we're working on an application. Uh, there was a designer involved, but she has left. And the client wants a new feature. Maybe the client wants a form, um, some text inputs and a button. What do we do? How do we decide where do we place the text? Well, how big will the text be? Where do we put the buttons? Where do we put the forms? Even as a developer, we have a lot of design decisions to make. So, I was working on a project with a uh, designer and we were working together on these different features and we noticed that a lot of the time you make a design decision and it has an influence on the development part and you make a development decision and it has an influence on the design part and it really is a collaboration between the two roles. It's not something you can split or hand over with a PDF. So, as a developer, I find it really interesting and also really practical to know a little bit about design myself. And for this talk, remember, I'm just a developer, I'm not a designer, but I spend some time into looking into practical details that I can use that make my work as a developer easier when it comes towards design. And this talk, I will, would like to discuss a few of those practical details. So first of all, when we talk about design, in this talk we mean the design of the interaction between the user and the product. So for instance, the design of a website or a mobile application. And why is this important? Well, design has a big influence on what the user thinks of your product. It's about communication. With the design, you can tell your user how your application works. And for instance, what kind of actions to perform to get certain functionality. The goal of design, of design is to give your user information in an efficient but also in a pleasable way. You want to get the attention of the user and you want to be able to have a clear communication with your user. So design is important because it can make your product stand out amongst other products. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to provide a unique selling point. Think about Apple, they designed stuff different than other stuff like an audio player and it gave them the unique selling prompt. It also gives you the ability to uh, provide trust in your application. Uh, remember a few years back when it was still uh, not common to buy stuff in the internet you looked at the website and you thought, do I trust this website? Am I going to give them my money to buy a product from them? You want uh, to use design to make information easier to find, to make your applications user friendly. And also, bad designs will make people go away. So design is communication. And one of the main forms of communication is text. And the majority of the web contains of text. So let's start at text first. Actually, when you look at text, then choosing the right font, but also the right font size, makes the text easier to read. And people will actually feel better when reading the text, and they will also be able to read the text faster. And the, uh, the reason behind this is that our eyes follow a natural pattern when reading text. And with your design choices around fonts or size, you can go with this pattern, but you also can go against this pattern, which makes the text harder to read. So this is why it is important to choose the correct sizes and the correct fonts. So there are literally thousands and thousands of fonts to choose from. So how do you make the selection of fonts? Well, basically, we have two groups of fonts. We have sans serif fonts and serif fonts. And the serif fonts, they have little endings at the end of the stroke. And the sans serif fonts are those without. So the fonts on the top are the sans serif fonts, and the fonts at the bottom are the serif fonts. And the basic rule is if you have a heading or just single text and you want the text to stand out, you use sans serif fonts. But if you have big blocks of text, so for instance a body, you use a serif font because of the line endings, they look better if you have a lot of words or a lot of letters in the text. So, what is helpful is if you don't have a lot of fonts to choose from, but you limit yourself to certain proven combinations. So, for instance, these are three 
uh, proven combinations of fonts that work well together. They're combinations of sans serif fonts and serif fonts, which you can use for headings and body text. So, to start your design, you can say, we just use two fonts, and it should be a proven combination, and whenever you need text, you just choose either of the fonts. So you don't go choosing new fonts for every text you make. Just limit yourself to really a small set. It will take some research about what kind of fonts you like, but you can even reuse these combinations in different applications or even on your resume or in a presentation. Okay, now that we have chosen our font, we want to choose the size. And you shouldn't do this random by the eye. One trick to use is that you can have a range of sizes and you just limit your design to this range of sizes. This is a range in where uh, the smaller font is 75% of the bigger one. So we use a fixed proportion to determine the sizes in our range. So that then we get 16, 21, 28, and so forth. This gives you less variables to choose from. And it actually, this limitation will make your design clearer and more consistent. Because you're not just random picking a font size. You're actually, if you want a smaller, you just go a whole step down. Or if you want a bigger, you go a whole step up. And there is a reason that we use a fixed proportion. And that's a topic we are going to cover next because proportion has a big influence on how your application design is perceived. Sometimes you see something and you get the feeling that it's just right. Well, usually, this is caused by the fact that the proportions are chosen correctly. So, if you look at the example on the left, it looks much more dull than the examples on the right. These look much more interesting and lively. And you probably have heard of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is about 62%. It's a proportion. And it's actually funny. It's not proven that the golden ratio is the best ratio. Apparently, it's somewhere between 60 and 80%. So a ratio between 60 and 80% makes it lots more interesting. And we. For the previous slide, for the sizes, we used 75%. So what more can you do with proportions? Well, have a look at the Twitter logo. This was actually designed by using circles of a fixed proportion. And there's a bigger circle and a smaller circle. And the smaller circles is 60% of 60% of the bigger one. So instead of just taking 60%, one step was skipped. But al that also works. So you can use these proportions to create images or to create logos. And you can do much more stuff with it. You can also determine how uh, big your white space areas will be or where to put items on a page. You can make a frame of proportion with boxes to lay out your items on the page. Another powerful form of communication is color. If you look at the three faces, the design is exactly the same except from the color. But we immediately know that green is good and red is bad. So color can really be a strong influence on how a user perceives your design. And the nice thing with color is that they are associated with themes and they also trigger emotions. So think for instance if you have a brand and uh, you want people to trust your brand. You can use a bluish color. But if you want to be perceived as youthful or bold, think about Coca-Cola, Nintendo, Lego, you would use red as a color. So when you're co on choosing your color, first think what kind of emotion do you want to trigger when the user sees your design. And an important thing about color is you shouldn't overdo it. Actually, if you look at the screen of your phone, just the icons of the apps, uh, the bigger brands, they probably only have one color and then white or black or a gray. So Facebook, the icon is just blue, for instance. LinkedIn, it's blue and white. So if you pay attention, you see that the big brands only use one or two colors and then together with some gray scale from white, gray to black. 
The most used colors are uh, red, blue, gray, and yellow. And in general, we distinguish warm colors like red and blue colors, uh, uh, cold colors like blue. And what happens is that uh, warmer colors, they tend to pop. So if you look at the design and something is red, it looks if it comes towards you. And if something is blue, it looks that it's lying further away. So with this color, you can also influence how you look at the picture and how the composition is perceived. So limit the amount of colors and use gray, white, or black to complement your colors if you need a little bit more variation in the design. So let's do a little quiz. This is a brand color and I want to know if you can recognize which of the three brands use this color. So who thinks this could be A, Starbucks? No one. One in the back. Two. Okay, B, B WhatsApp. Three, okay. Uber? One. Okay, I don't think it's statistically too significant, but the most amount of people chose WhatsApp. It's actually WhatsApp. Uber is, uh, I think, gray, gray, bluish. And Starbucks is a really a dark green. So um, people recognize your brand by the color. So it also works the other way around. So think about this when you pick a color. OK, so to summarize this, um, if you have to pick a font, don't go looking at Google fonts and look at all the fonts. Stick with a few proven combinations. You can Google for this. There are even cheat, see, cheat sheets, PDFs with just a few proven combinations. And they will be combinations of serif and sans serif fonts. If you choose fonts for the web, use at least 16 points. 12 is, is already too small. People perceive um, bigger, text better, bigger text better than smaller text. So 16 or bigger, and use a range of sizes. So don't use random sizes. N take a proportion, make your scale of all the sizes, and use that whenever you use your text. In the design, make use of proportions. So stick to a fixed proportion, and when you have to lay out your items on a page, you can just make boxes of these proportions, and then you can make your composition based on the boxes. But even if you do more complicated stuff, Stick to these uh, proportions. And finally, colors, again, be consistent. Don't overdo it. Just pick one or two colors and complement with gray, white, or black. So the basic, the summary of summaries, that's what we saw this morning, I think, in one of the talks, is be consistent. Because otherwise, your design will look not really nice. It will look a bit rough. So consistency really is the key. Any questions? Well, thank you very much for attending. Mm -hmm.